I've had a bunch of requests to show more examples of how to use the signal system on the Predator. In this video, we're going to be setting up the same half trend indicator in two different ways. First, we will use it to create an actual order when the signal is printed. Next, we will use it to filter out one of our built-in auto entries in the Predator. So let's head over to Discord to download this indicator. You can find a whole bunch of third-party signals inside the Predator signal room. All of these are user submitted. Some come in the form of indicators or some come in the form of strategies that you have to enable before you enable the Predator. And while we're on this page, I wanna give a massive shout out to Chomsky and really any member that's been posting signals or templates, you guys are really helping the community. Keep up the amazing work guys, thank you so much. All right, so once we download and import the indicator into our NinjaTrader, let's load it to our chart. So for your signals, a lot of them will be indicators. Some of them, again, might be strategies. So you'll have to load those up before you load the Predator. But for this one, it's just going to be the half trend indicator. And just a note, I did not write this indicator. We just modified it so we could use it with the Predator. So all credit goes to the original author. So let's load this up. And also these examples I'm showing today are going to be for any sort of signal that you want to use with the Predator. We're just using the half trend as an example, but really the same steps are going to apply to any other indicator or strategy with the signals. All right, so now that we have it loaded on, this is going to be the most important part. What we need to make this work with the Predator. First of all, we need a Ninja Trader draw object. And these usually come in the form of a text or arrow. The easiest way to tell if we're able to use the signal itself is if we're able to click on it and it has these little dots that appear around it. So if we click on the text, you will see each one is able to get selected. Now, if we click on these triangles and you see it highlights the entire plot, that means it's coded differently and we are not able to use these. So again, we're just looking for signals that are highlighted independently. So now that we have that, let's left click on one, right click, and then go to properties. So from here, the most important part that we need is the information the tag gives us. There should be some sort of text followed by numbers. And these numbers, if we look at the left-hand column, should be going up as we go down the list. If you see this, it means it's most likely coded using the current bars method which is what we need for the Predator. If you see the numbers before the text or if you see some sort of a date, that means we cannot use it. So it has to be a text with a number. And the part that we need from the tag is the text with any spaces right up to the numbers. So if you see a space between the last character and the number, we're going to have to input that into the Predator as well. In this case, there are no spaces, so we do not need to add a space. So here we see is green and is red. That is the text that we need to put into the Predator to make this work. So once we have that information, let's get out of here and actually load the Predator. So now we're in the properties for the Predator. Let's scroll down to our custom signals, select this option. And we're starting off with just the entry signal. So let's select this. Now for our long signal entry, this is going to create a long entry order when it detects this signal. So just like the signal, we type in is green. And for a short, we type in is red. Now for the color identifier, you only add this option if your tags are the same. This is just going to separate them. But if the long tag is different from the short tag, you can get rid of this. You don't need to add a color identifier. This is actually going to make it run just a little bit more efficient. So once we have that, that is all we need for the signals. I don't recommend adding the exits and the filters using the exact same tags. This could cause some complications as the strategy is progressing. Really try and keep every signal different if it's possible. So for here, just do the entry signals. And let's set up our order. So I'm going to select my stop loss. 
let's select a tick stop of, let's do 100 ticks just because we have a pretty big bar size. And we can select our profit target. Again, it's a pretty big bar size. I'm going to go with 300 ticks just to see it generate on the chart. Otherwise, I'm just going to keep this simple. This is probably not going to be profitable, but I just want to show examples of how to do this. So I'm just going to hit apply. All right, so once we enable, let's take a look at our validation system on the top left-hand corner of the chart. And this is just going to help us determine if our signals are valid. If we look at the top right-hand corner, we see it's just our entry signal enabled. So that is all the validation system shows. You will see our tag is green with a check mark. That just means the long tag is valid and the predator has read it. And now it will continue to look for more long tags. Same thing with our short tag is red with a check mark. Again, our short tag is valid and the predator is going to look for that tag as well. If you see an hourglass, that means there's likely a problem of how the signal was put into the predator and something might not be reading properly. Or in some cases, it could mean the system is still loading and looking for the signal. But a majority of the time, it just means something is wrong. So now that we have that, I'm just going to play it so we can see how it functions. So here we got our first down short signal. It entered our trade with a 100 tick stop and a 300 tick profit, just like we defined. Let me keep playing this. Let me move this up just uh, so we can see it run. And I'm just going to move my profit a little bit just to get out of this trade. And then we can see a long signal. Order filled. Okay, so it hit our first profit there. And obviously you can define your trail stops, anything like that along the way. Just however you want to customize your order, you can do that with this. So moving on. Probably could have held out for a little bit, but it's just playback. This is just an example. Order submitted. All right. So here we got our long signal. Again, it entered our trade. 100 tick stop, 300 tick profit. And yeah, that's all there really is to it. I know a lot of you guys want to keep entering and only exit when there's a signal in the opposite direction. So instead of setting an exit signal, we can utilize the rev exit button with the re-entry in the opposite direction option enabled. So let me just play it and see how that works. I'm going to move these so we don't get stopped out right away. Order submitted. And then once we get our down signal, it just takes us out of our position and enters us in the opposite direction. And again, we'll just see it with a long. And I'm not saying you have to trade like this. I'm just giving more examples of things you can do with your own strategy. Order submitted. And again, it just reversed our position to the long side now. So that is how we set up the entry signal. Now let's go back into the properties and set up our filter. I'm just going to unselect the entry signal and I'm going to open up our filter. Now the main difference between the entry and the filter is the entry is going to actually create your order. As soon as it detects that signal, it's going to enter you into the trade. Your filter, however, is just going to filter out a separate order. So for example, if you're using a reversal entry, your filter is just going to set a condition that has to be met before it enters with a reversal or any other auto entry you selected. So with your filters, you have to turn them on and off as well. So for our long filter, we want it to turn on when we have an up signal. So it's green. And then we want to turn off our long filter when we have a down signal. So is red. And it's the opposite for our shorts. We want to turn on our shorts with a red signal. So is red. And we want to turn off our shorts when we have an up signal. 
so is green. So just think of the filter as an on and off switch. When it's on, it's going to allow the traits to happen. When it is off, it's going to prevent any traits. So once we have that, let's select our auto entry. So just like we mentioned, I'm going to use the reversals. I'm going to just trade a reversal and I'm going to color it in. And for our order, I'm going to keep it the same just to keep this video short. So again, I'm going to hit apply. So I'm just going to go back in time a little bit so we can replay the same time. So I'm going to hit enable. All right. Once we have this loaded on the chart, again, you can verify your long filter by the is green and the off switch by is red. Again, your short on is red, your short off is green. And we have check marks on all of them, so the signals are valid. Now, you may come into some scenarios where your status might not match up exactly where it's supposed to be. These, in most cases, will match up, but just in case they don't, you're able to actually click on them and sync them up to the exact spot you want them to be. So whether you want your longs on or off, you can do that. Same with the shorts. So I'm just going to leave it because we just got an up signal. So our long status should be on. And as it detects signals, these will change automatically. So you don't have to keep switching them manually. This will all be done automatic. So again, I'm just going to hit play. Order submitted. And no, oh, we actually got an entry right away. So we had a reversal with our long signal. It entered us into the trade just like we defined. So I'm going to keep playing this. So here we got a down signal. So it automatically switched our filter status to the short side, turned off our long. Then we got a reversal entry and that is how it entered the trade. So I'm just going to keep playing it and see if we get another example. So we're just waiting for a long signal or another short reversal. Here we got a up signal. So if we look at our status, it automatically turned our long filter on and our short filter off. So now we're looking for a long reversal entry. So let's see if one happens here. Uh, we did not get one, but we got a short signal. So again, it turns our short on, long off. So now only short reversals are valid. And still no reversals, but we just switched back to long. And finally, we get a long reversal with our long filter turned on and it enters our trade. So that's all there really is to the filters. It's just an on and off switch for a different type of entry. So I hope you guys found this video useful in making the distinction between an entry and a filter signal. I'm going to try and create a lot more of these videos soon, but as always, take care, enjoy.